Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this video, we're gonna see about what are the inbuilt functional interfaces that is available in Java. Right? Java developers have developed a lot of functional interfaces for our use. But right before understanding why they have created that, okay, for our usage, we need to understand what is the problem with creating our own functional interfaces. Right? Creating functional interfaces is very simple. Right? You need to create an interface. You need to add an abstract method. Right? It can have its own, uh, you know, default or static methods. Right? It's very simple. We have learned about how we can create our own functional interfaces, and we also learned about how we can provide a um, implementation using Lambda expression. That looks very simple. Then what is the a problem with that approach we're gonna see that in detail today and how we can solve that problem using generics and even if you solve that problem using generics it it will it'll still have certain problems we will see about that and how this functional interfaces that's developed by java developers will be handy for us to provide our uh, uh, lambda expressions or implementations we'll see about that in detail we'll also see about uh, four important functional interfaces that is created by java developers and uh, the upcoming tutorials we'll see about more but you know these are the four important functional interfaces that consumer supplier function and predicate that i want to you know give a small overview in this particular uh, video and from the upcoming videos we'll see each of them in detail and we'll also see about their byte types right if you don't understand any of this that's absolutely fine uh, we'll get started and then uh, by the end of the video you'll understand what are the things that i'm telling now right good without, without wasting much time let's head to the eclipse workspace right so if you notice i have a printable interface okay i have a printable interface um, okay it, it you know i have uh, done some practice so let me remove all the generics and uh, uh, you know all these complicated terms now okay and then just keep it as very simple one right public white print right we can provide the implementation using lambda expression that's what we have uh, seen in this previous classes so this is the method signature maybe i'll add a, a string type here maybe string uh, uh, yeah something like that right so this is a functional interface that has an abstract method that that method going to accept only one parameter that is of string type and it will print some it will do some logic so maybe if you want to provide a lambda expression for this so you can write i printable right so obj equal to right so this is the method signature that i am speaking about right so basically it's going to accept a string and then it's going to do some operation maybe it's going to print out that string right what of the string that i receive i want to print it out right so this is one line so maybe i can remove all these things okay i don't need that curly braces this is just one parameter so i can also remove this if you want to make sure that this is working you can call this print method and we can pass some string right if i run this particular test it will work absolutely fine right it will print that. so it will basically what are the parameter that you are passing it going to print that so right so it's a very very simple interface and we have provided the implementation using lambda expressions again guys if you don't understand what is this please watch the previous videos where i have explained about what is functional interface what is lambda expression what is the lambda expression signature how we can use that you know all those things in the previous videos please head towards that and watch that before you know watching this further good this is a very simple method so we have done this so now i have a new requirement that it's that i have i will pass a integer it also needs to print it so either you can alter this okay to like this but if i alter this again i cannot use a string so what i can do i have to create a new one so let's say uh, this is my integer uh, interface i am creating one more so maybe um, i'll create a new interface uh, let's say i create i string printable okay so this basically going to print my strings all right so this is an interface i am going to annotate with functional interface and right let's also copy the methods that is available here okay and then we'll put it here okay so this not going to accept as integer this will accept such thing so basically you have to create all these things right so basically i can remove this and give just one it will work so for for string printable if i have to provide an implementation so i need to give i string printable obj1 maybe okay equal to whatever the thing that i receive okay i want to print it hey and if i have to call it obj1 dot print 
So this time I can pass a string. Okay, now there is a new requirement. I need to provide a, a lambda expression where the method accepts array list or a, or a list or it, it accepts some employee class, right? Employee class reference. So if you if you, if you want to create uh, another interface for this, okay, you cannot keep on creating a lot of things, right? So basically you, can, you have long uh, decimal, you know, float, you have other custom classes as well. So you cannot, it is impossible for you to create everything on your own. So what I want to do is I want to, you know, make sure that I have only this, okay, and then handle all the parameter types. Okay, for that, you can use generics. Again, guys, generics itself is a very big topic. So I cannot cover everything today. So let me cover a very simple one. So what I am going to do is I'm going to add a T here. Basically, it indicates you tell me what and all things that you want to store, right? So basically, I'm passing like this. So Amudan, where did you got this idea? So press Control, Shift, and T. Okay, you can open a util. So so you can type list and then you can open this list class. So when we are using list, we normally use a generic site. Right? So we tell list of string. So let's say I want to create a list. What I'll do list, I'll pass the string. So which means I'm telling you, I'm going to store a string, string kind of uh, string objects in this, right? So basically maybe I'll name it as obj2 equal to new array list, right? Array list. Right. So which basically indicates that you're going to store. So you can press control shift and O and then import all these things. Right. Right. So you are telling that I'm going to store a string type into this. Basically, we want to create a sample, you know, similar kind of thing here. OK, my interface is going to accept a T. So whenever you are defining my interface reference type, you tell me what you are going to store inside this. So suppose uh, I have changed this to T. So whatever you have mentioned, suppose I say T a string then it will work then this will also become string so this parameter will actually stores a string value let's check whether this is working fine let's say i'll remove all these things so it is telling me error so you're, you're trying to store everything here so this, but this basically needs a generic so it's telling in for generic type of arguments so i want to tell what exactly i want to store so instead of creating multiple interfaces with generics I basically i can create only one so i printable okay this time it is asking me a generic type. So this time I'm telling I'm gonna store a string, which means this method gonna accept only the string. Okay, so let's say obj equal to new, or you can provide the implementation directly, right? Whatever that's coming, I'm gonna do a sysout and then print it, right? That's it. So now if you type obj dot, and if you notice there is a print that accepts a string type, right? String t. So this basically indicates whatever the generic you pass there, you can pass that. So I can pass this work. Yeah. And then suppose if I want to do a same thing with, with the integer, right? So basically you can pass an integer type, right? OBJ1. Because you can't you cannot pass int, right? Int is not a prim, int is a primitive. You have to pass a class, wrapper class, right? So whatever the uh, thing that I receive, I want to print it. Okay, and then same way, obj one dot, and if you notice, it is accepting an integer now, so you can pass an integer, right? Good. So basically, these things will work absolutely fine, right? So with just one interface, now we are handling uh, two different tasks. Again, you, this t can be anything, right? But even then, there are a lot of method signatures. This is just a method signature that accepts that accepts one parameter and returns nothing. If, but if let's say my requirement is I need to accept two parameter and return something, then what I can do, I have to create another interface and then I need to pass all these things. I need to create generics for that. So let's try to do that now. So let's create a new interface Let's name it as um, I test interface, something like this, or my interface, whatever. Okay, my interface. So this interface, I need to have a method. Let's say uh, public. It's it's by default public abstract. So maybe I can name this method as um, some name. So you can give any name, right? So yeah. This gonna return, so let's say string. 
it accepts two strings string a comma string b let's assume okay this is this is having a method and this is also a functional interface right so basically this is a functional interface that has a method uh, some name uh, and then uh, it it returns a string it accepts two strings and then it returns a string right for that if you want to use it right if you go here if you want to use it so what i can do my interface a obj3 yeah we already have two maybe i'll come on this equal to so it accepts two things right so this is a this is the lambda syntax right so it accepts two things so let's say a comma b whatever you so and then return a plus b what are the strings you receive just append it and return back okay since this is a single line statement you didn't need this uh, curly braces again if you don't need this return statement also it can infer all this information right so whatever the string i receive i will append them and return back so obj3 dot you have this sum name method that accepts two strings okay i'm moving in something like this okay now if you run this method so it will print so this is actually returning me that so i have to do sys out and then actually do the printing so it is basically printing me that right so you you cannot create multiple interfaces like this again for this to be generic i can add a generic type so t comma u comma r which means uh, so i am accepting two input arguments okay this is my return type so let's say instead of a string i can mention t instead of this i can mention u again parameter name can be anything but you know you can you can name this like this so that it's more readable so i can also mention r so whatever so whenever you are defining an interface you need to mention what are the two input types and what is the return type so you have now the liberty while declaring so if i go here it will tell me an error because you know uh, you need to use it generics this time so let's say my interface i am using my interface now it is asking me generics the first two ones indicates your input and r indicate indicates your output so what i can tell i all three are string now okay so maybe obj3 call to so we going to receive two things a comma b and a plus b same thing but this time it's it works with generics right obj bj3 dot some name pass the two strings right good so this will run absolutely fine so i cannot create all these interfaces every time suppose if, if i need one more thing so this is an this is an example that i showed that accept two parameter and return something what if there is an requirement that accepts uh, two parameter do some operation and returns me a boolean okay i need to create a new interface for this i need to provide the you know if i have to use a lambda expression i need to create my own interface but there are so many combination that i cannot keep on creating these interfaces okay that is really a problem that's why java guys have created a package called uh, java.util.function okay in this in this there are a lot of interfaces which is which are actually functional interfaces which you can use it for your uh, la functional way of programming to use a lambda expression let's go to the uh, chrome and let's search with uh, i am going to the java docs so if you notice there is a package called java.util.function and then it has a lot of interfaces in that so if you hover over this there is almost 20 to 30 interfaces which you can use for your uh, uh, functional programming so first let's take i have something called as consumer here if you notice this is very similar to some interface that we have created now if we go and go to this um, i printable this i printable <laughs> this this is almost same to this consumer right so you, the name is different right ignore the name so this can be co consumer as well it doesn't matter so, so this is very very similar 
so they have already done all this hard work of creating these functional interfaces that accepts a generic right print press control shift and t let's go to that particular interface so let's say consumer and then so consumer if i open this see this is consumer that has a method called accept okay this is very similar this is very similar to my i printable so i have a method called print i already i have explained the method name doesn't really matter the same way your your interface name doesn't really matter apart from you have a reference apart from here your your uh, you know interface name doesn't matter apart from here your method name doesn't matter so they have already done all the hard work of creating all these things for us so if you notice there is a functional interface so they, they have already done all these things so they also have a default method called and then okay which we will also use in our upcoming classes but for now just understand they have already done all the hard work in creating the functional interfaces for us so you don't have to create these kind of functional interfaces for your use again if there is something that you want okay apart from the available list here okay apart from the available list mentioned here then you can create your own functional interface but if there is something that is already available please use them and then you can use it in your code that's a very important thing so they have already done that so let's say uh, we have also created my interface that uh, that takes two arguments and return something else right so again guys it doesn't this t and u doesn't always have to be string this can be string this can be integer this can be array list this can be integer it can be anything there or can be also anything just for demonstration purpose i just mentioned all these are string but it can be anything else right so if it, this methods uh, this functional interface is almost similar to other one that is your uh, by function so if you notice there is a function that accept two parameters and return or right so it takes represent the function that accept two arguments and produces a result right this is basically what we have created so if there is something that accept one parameter and return just one then it is called as function so they basically you have all these interfaces already created so i also have given an example where you might need uh, it accepts two parameter and returns a boolean then in that case then you can use by predicate so there is something called as by predicate so if you notice represent a predicate boolean valued function of two arguments so you can use all these things okay so it accepts two, t and u and it returns say that true or false okay these are these both are just input arguments to this functional interface okay so you can also go control shift and t you can press by predicate okay and then go to java.util.function you can see it accepts two arguments and it has a method called test which will returns you a boolean so they have already created all these things for us to use so we're going to start using them in our code and we'll we'll leverage a lot of functional programming hereafter so from next class we will be heading straight forward to functional interfaces how we can use them in test automation and uh, i'm sure this you find this video helpful uh, if you if you like it please do subscribe to the channel guys share it with your friends i'll see you in another great video until then tata bye bye from all thank you bye